Good day, everyone. First, I would like to thank the organizing committee for inviting me to give this keynote address. I will give my talk from the University of Auckland in New Zealand. Today, I will talk about the behavior of bridges under specially varying earthquake motions. We know that the nature of a bridge is to span a terrain such as a river or a valley. Because long span bridges often have several segments or girders to accommodate the consequence of fluctuation of temperature, a gap between girder and girder and abutment is necessary. The size of this gap is limited to ensure a smooth traffic flow. However, in earthquake regions, the bridge also need to survive the earthquake load. In earthquakes, the relative movement between adjacent bridge structures, that means girders and abutment, can be much larger than those due to temperature fluctuations. If the opening relative movement is larger than the seat length of the girder, unseating of the girder will result in collapse of bridge stack. If the closing relative movement is larger than the existing gap between adjacent girder or girder and abutment, then damage to girder or abutment due to pounding can occur. Many measures have been developed to mitigate the relative movement induced damage. However, their design is still inadequate. In addition, the measures are often for preventing bridge collapse, that means mainly mitigating the SX excessive opening relative movement and not mitigating damage due to pounding. We propose the usage of modular expansion joint to mitigate opening as well as closing relative movement. Cobra earthquake occur luckily in early hours around 5 a.m. However, the unsitting of this bridge stack killed a few people. This picture shows both double decks of the curved bridge in Kobe collapsed due to unsitting. This picture was taken from the low side of the bridge. I took this picture after the 2010 Chile earthquake. We can see the consequence of large opening relative movement between bridge stack. When the seat length is insufficient, collapse of bridge girder will take place. Earthquake cause not only opening but also closing relative movement. Since conventional bridges have only a few centimeter gap between the deck pounding and consequently damage to girder ends can take place. Here we see the consequence of pounding at the apartment in the 2010 Chile earthquake. Pounding can also take place due to transversal relative movement as we can see in this picture of the La Mochite bridge near the city Concepcion. The out of plane relative movement damages the shear key of the bridge. At the same time, the supporting soil also liquefied. Similar case can be observed in the 2011 crisis earthquake in New Zealand. The epicenters of the cellar earthquake is at the tip of the arrow in the port town of Littleton. 
The epicenter distance to the CBD is only 10 kilometers. Two river running across the city, the Headcoat River in the south and the Avon River in the north. In the surroundings of the river, the sandy soil is saturated that cause a lot of liquefaction issue. As we know, in the case of Nisos earthquake, the vertical ground motions can be much stronger than the horizontal component. The Red Star HPSC is the pumping station that we will see in a minute. The influence of the near source earthquake can be seen of this graph. The ratio of the vertical to horizontal peak ground oscillations with the distance to, to the epicenter clearly show that within a 10 kilometer distance, the vertical component was almost six times larger than the horizontal component. The red time history is the horizontal ground motions at the pumping stations at SPSC. The peak ground oscillation is 2.3 meter per second power two. The black time history is the vertical ground motion with much larger vertical peak ground oscillations. The higher frequency content and the much larger amplitude can be clearly seen. We can see the consequence of high magnitude of vertical ground motion for bridges in this picture. Here we see the top view of the bridge. This is the locations of the abutment circle in yellow here that we will see in the next slide. The strong vertical ground motions practically cause damage due to vertical impact between the girder and the supporting abutment, as we can see here. From the study, we have identified several causes of relative movement. One of the significant influence factors is the frequency content of the ground motions, the frequency ratio of the adjacent structures. Unequal fundamental frequency will cause out-of-phase response and thus relative good response. Current design specifications therefore recommended that adjacent structures should have the same or very at least very similar fundamental frequency so that they will respond in phase. Consequently, no bonding will take place. In the case of adjacent building, due to the proximity, a uniform ground excitation can be justified. Hence, a similar fundamental frequency will indeed prevent building from pounding. In the case of a long bridge, the excitations of the adjacent bridge support is normally not the same since seismic waves need time to travel from one bridge support to adjacent one. And the soil along the bridge will never be uniform. Consequently, even if the adjacent structure have the same fundamental frequency, relative response can still occur. Hence, the good intentions of most current design specifications will just cause worse bridge performance because same or similar fundamental frequency will cause relative response if specially non-uniform ground motions are to be expected. The other significant factor is often ignored, that is the effect of soil structure interactions. If the local side have different soil conditions, which are often the case, Unequal soil structure interactions uh, will cause relative response between the adjacent structures. While in the case of long bridges, 
the structure, soil structure interaction is relevant. This is not in adjacent building cases. The interrelations between this influence factor determine then the development of relative response. To limit the influence factor, we first look at the influence of supporting soil and uniform ground excitations. The bridge is in this case placed on a sand surface within a large lamina, a uh, large sandbox. The left and right abutment are fixed to the sandbox so that all abutment in the bridge will experience the same ground motions simulated by the sig table of the size of four meter times of four meters. The ground motion was simulated based on the New Zealand design spectrum for cellular soil conditions. The dashed line here in the lower figure show the target design spectrum. In the experiment, a gap size of five millimeter or prototype 10 centimeter was selected. The green dashed line is the relative displacement without considering pounding. Bounding clearly as anticipated limit the movement of the girder by the left and right abutment. This picture shows the activated bending moment at the base of the support. Because of the abutment constraint, the girder movement in both directions is limited. This results in much smaller bending moment as shown in comparison between the solid and dust line. This picture shows the influence of the supporting soil alone without cons considering the simultaneous effect of pounding. The soil structure interaction in the considered case is beneficial for the bending moment development. If the limitations of the movement due to the abutment is considered, even though the development of the bending moment is not the same, the soil structure interaction does not change much the amplitude, only the time history. For a long bridge, a uniform ground excitation cannot be justified also because the soil along the bridge will never be uniform. Consequently, the, res the bridge response is determined by a simultaneous effect of spatially varying ground motion, pounding, and soil structure interactions. In this study, we use three large shake tables to simulate the non-uniform ground excitations. Here we see the experiment without considering uh, the soil structure interactions only fix bridge support are uh, considered. The time history of the ground motion at the left apartment bridge support in the right apartment clearly show the coherency loss. This photo serves the experiment without soil structure interactions using two elastic table left middle to support the bridge and the right sig table to simulate the right abutment movement. So we can see here the same uh, experiment, uh, but we only see here the, the close-up of the pounding location at the right abutment and the girder. The red dots show the laser displacement transducers. So I'll run the clips here. Uh, this we cannot see if we use uniform ground excitations.
This video clip displayed the bridge response with pounding and source structure injection simulated by a large sandbox. So this is the, the, the bridge girder with support on the sand surface and the left and right abutment are attached to the left and right seat table. This is also cannot be observed if we ignore the soil as well as the spatial variations of the ground motions. Without pounding, the spatially varying ground motion cause slightly higher relative displacement between girder and abutment. In contrast, including pounding, the effect of spatially varying ground excitation is much stronger. The red dust line indicates the gap size between the pounding uh, when pounding would be considered. Pounding clearly increased the unsitting potential of the girder. Similar observation can be made in terms of activated bending moment at the bridge peer support. The spatial variations of the ground motions enhance the bending moment. Here we see the consequence of spatially varying ground motions for the development of a pounding force. Pounding force reflect the likelihood of damage to the pounding interface. With an assumption of uniform ground excitation, pounding occurs much more often. In contrast, even though pounding occurs less frequently, the spatially Varying ground motions cause much stronger pounding and thus increase the potential of damage due to pounding. To mitigate damage due to large relative movement between adjacent bridge structures, several measures have been developed. We can see here. Restrainer is used in a flyover in Tokyo City. Similar with different type of restrainer. Here in Kansai Airport in Osaka, stopper are used. However, most of these measures are only for preventing bridge collapse and not for avoiding pounding damage like we can see here. For preventing girder unseating and pounding simultaneously, we propose the usage of a modular expansion joint. The joint consists of a several gap of up to three centimeters. The system enables the gaps to open and close without causing pounding. At the same time, uh, the supporting bar prevent collapse of the bridge deck. The total gap size will be determined by the simultaneous effect that we have mentioned before. Let's have a look at this example using the spatially varying ground motion simulated based on Japanese design spectra for hard, medium and soft soil conditions. As anticipated, the soft soil ground displacement can have higher coherency loss. In this case, a difference in the displacement, ground displacement up to one meter can be observed. Assuming that the left bridge segment has a fundamental period T1 of one second, 
as anticipated, when both adjacent bridge segments have the same fundamental free period, a uniform ground motion will not cause any relative displacement between them, as the value at t2 equal one second show, that is zero value. Assuming that the adjacent bridge segment experience a ground motion with a time delay due to the wave propagations and the distance between two bridge pier, the maximum closing relative displacement at T1 of one second has no longer zero value. The spatially varying ground motion caused the largest relative displacement. This is also the case when the left bridge segment have a sort of fundamental period of five seconds. This picture shows the influence of the frequency content of the ground motions on the maximum closing relative displacement. This is for hard soil condition. This is for medium and for soft soil conditions. As anticipated, a soft soil caused the largest closing relative displacement. This picture indicates the additional influence of soil structure injections. The worst case occurs when all influence factors are considered, that is, the influence of soil spatial variation of the ground motions. This picture show that we have uh, before, that is uh, the maximum closing relative displacement. The opening, the maximum opening relative displacement also have the same tendency. So that means in the case of soft soil, lar the largest uh, opening relative displacement can be expected. To ensure the quality of the outcome obtained, we have done several experiments in a laboratory here for the fixed space case or in the field test here in the, at, at, uh, at the beach site. We have proposed a relative displacement spectrum to determine the maximum relative movement between bridge structures. Assuming that the left and the right bridge girder have the fundamental period T sub 1 and T sub 2, with the case of left bridge segment of one second and the fundamental period of the right bridge segment of 2.5 seconds, we can then obtain uh, the maximum relative displacement to enable a modular expansion joint to cope with relative movement without causing pounding and unseating. These are some publications on modular expansion joint. Some recent publications are listed here. Should you interested in the research? This I summarize some of my work in the latest uh, second editions of the uh, dynamic of bridge structures. I now conclude the actual response without or with pounding cannot be obtained by considering uniform ground motions. In the case of spatially varying ground motions, the relative opening displacement and bending moment can be amplified by 78% and 88, uh, 18%. The spatially varying ground motion cause more severe pounding in comparison to uniform ground motions, a 45 increase of the pounding force can be observed. The consequence of unequal fundamental frequency, soil structure interactions, and ground motions due to 
bridge propagations and non-uniform soil development along the bridge can cause large relative movement larger than the existing gap and thus cause increased damage potential. Uh, we propose the usage of a modular expansion joint to accommodate the last relative displacement between the bridge structures. To help proper design of the modular expansion joint so that it can cope with the largest expected relative movement, not only the frequency, the fundamental frequency of the adjacent structures, the non-uniform soil structure interaction between the structures and the soil, and the non-uniform ground excitations, all this need to be considered, especially in the case when the fundamental frequency between the structures is uh, large. To close my talk, I would like to invite you to attend the 26th Austral-Asian Conference on the Mechanics of Structures and Material in Auckland next year. You will also have the opportunity to explore the beautiful country, for example, to see the galaxy that make you realize how small we are and how short our life spine is. We can also, you can also see pure nature like uh, in field plane and experience millions of glowworm that you can see only in New Zealand perhaps. We plan uh, to have this conference this December actually because of the uncertainty due to the COVID-19 we propose uh, we postpone it to next year December. The conference has the support of three top international journal that is uh, make material, engineering structures, and construction and building material. We plan to select the contributions to this conference and publish as a special issue of these three international journal. The proceeding itself will be published in a Scopus index uh, proceeding by Springer for luck. So to obtain the information from of the conference, you can visit this website or contact uh, this uh, email address. Thank you.